Hi, I'm Matt and welcome back to Soil Lab. Increasingly, I find myself getting asked the question about organic fertility in lawns. We've developed a study comparing an acidic and a basic soil and three different fertilizers and their nutrient release curves. Why are we comparing these different organic sources in these different soils? Well, it's to help develop nutrient release curves so we can better understand when and how often to apply these organic sources to best match our nutrient release to our plant needs. We also wanted to compare just different organic products. So we used three different types of products. We used one that's the byproduct of wastewater treatment. We used one plant-based organic fertilizer product. And we used another blended product that blended feather meal, compost, and potash. So three unique organic products, two unique soils, and then we tracked the nutrient release curve in each. We'll be presenting those results to you here in just a moment as soon as we talk about how we designed the study. First, we collected native, acidic, and basic soils from our region. The acidic soil happens to be kind of medium textured, so loamy. It has a lot of silt with a little sand and clay. Our basic soil, it happens to be fairly coarse and sandy, predominantly sand with a little bit of silt and even less clay. In our basic soil, although it's coarse and sandy, it does tend to have quite a bit of organic matter. We'll see if that changes our nutrient release curve at all. Throughout the study, these were kept in a lab environment on a bench, and the soil temperature averaged 62 degrees Fahrenheit throughout the study. So realize in your home lawn that these results might vary a little bit if your soil temperatures are a little cooler or a little bit warmer. These were kept field moist throughout the study, so they were never saturated and anaerobic, and they never dried down and cracked either. So just nice and moist, again, trying our best to simulate the home lawn. Once we had equal amounts of soil in each of the containers, we applied our organic fertilizers. So we applied the 640 fertilizer, a 712 fertilizer, and an 824 fertilizer. All of these were applied with equivalent amounts of nitrogen. The amount of nitrogen that we put out was equivalent to one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet. So how much total fertilizer product did that amount to? Well, that ranged from about a low of 12 pounds of fertilizer per thousand up to just shy of uh, 17 pounds of fertilizer per thousand. So very reasonable amounts to apply over top of existing turf. After we applied those fertilizers, we sampled on weeks two, four, and eight to map out this nutrient release curve. Let's see what we learned. We're gonna start off with our acidic soil and the 640 fertilizer. What you're going to notice is we've got two lines on the graph here. One is untreated and one showing the nitrogen release of that fertilizer. The untreated control was treated exactly the same, except it didn't receive any fertilizer. Well, what did we learn? Well, we saw that at week two, a little over 7% of the total nitrogen applied was made available to our plant. Through time on weeks four and weeks eight, we saw significant increases, so a nice linear sloping curve from weeks two through eight, showing enhanced release over time, which ultimately is what I would expect. Now, let's compare a different fertilizer in that same soil. In that same soil, that same acidic soil, and our 712 fertilizer, we saw a little bit less, but still 5.5% of our applied nitrogen made available in those first two weeks. Similarly, we saw enhanced release through time through weeks eight. Had we carried this study out, we likely would have saw that continuance of release, maybe leveling off. The trend was the same with our 824 fertilizer, with just over 7% of that applied nitrogen being available in the first two weeks and a very linear, smooth curve of release as we moved through time. So that nitrogen was being released steadily from weeks two through eight. Was it any different in the basic soil? We saw a little bit of a difference here. We saw a little bit of a belly in the middle, but more or less in this basic soil with the 640 fertilizer, we saw a pretty flat curve of release between weeks two and four with that enhanced release moving through week eight. That trend continued with our 712 fertilizer, where we had about 3% of that nitrogen made available early at week two and more being made available at weeks four and then ultimately at week eight. Lastly, we looked at the 824 fertilizer in this basic soil 
and it trended almost identical um, with 5% of that applied nitrogen at week two and the rest being released through time. So what does this tell us? Some of the key takeaways are that the basic soil, which was near pH 8, remember, had a pretty level release curve for those first four weeks, and then we saw a pickup in the release weeks four through eight. The acidic soil didn't have that week two through four plateau, but had a more significant and linear increase weeks two through eight. So one thing to remember in this study is that it did show nitrogen release from all of our organic fertilizers in both our acidic and our basic soil. But we didn't have any plant uptake through this study. What we may have realized if we had turf growing in these containers is that the uptake of nitrogen by the turf surpassed the release rate from these organic fertilizers. And so how do we put that bit of information to use? Well, maybe we're using an organic base fertilizer, but supplementing with synthetics as well. Or maybe we are applying a higher rate of organic or organics at more frequent intervals. Whatever your fertility philosophy is, organics certainly may have a place in it in your program. Hopefully this data helps drive decisions in your lawn. Thanks for following us along on Soil Lab. If you enjoyed this and would like more similar content, please like, subscribe, and hit the notifications. I'll look forward to seeing you in the lab.